Hey guys, welcome back. This is Out of the Park Baseball 22 with Colorado Rockies here on GM Games. My name is Aaron, host of the Around the World Sports Channel. So drop us both a subscribe and like and enjoy the video. So we are at April 1st. We are a couple of days away from opening day. Uh, the last episode was the live stream this past Sunday where we played our first postseason game. It was a 7-2 loss to the San Diego Padres in the wild card round. We went through the offseason, made a couple of major additions to our embattled bullpen, and we have simmed through the uh, through spring training, and we're about ready to uh, handle our cutdowns and, and make sure that our minor league rosters are set properly, and then we can get into opening day. I did make one trade, uh, and it was minor. I just did it offline because I don't know. I don't know why I did it offline. I just did. But we picked up Andrelton Simmons. I noticed that he was on the trade block. Uh, and he was in the minor leagues, so he, we wouldn't have to put him on the 40-man roster. And I really have him as injury, um, I guess, insurance in case um, something uh, were to happen um, to Adalberto Mondesi. Uh, Mondesi is obviously our starting shortstop, and he's not going anywhere. But I wanted to have someone who could play a very, very good defensive shortstop should Mondesi get hurt and not have to rely on, you know, Enrique Hernandez or something whose ratings are, are pretty poor at short. So we made that move, picked up Simmons. He's just going to sit in AAA um, until, unless uh, Mondesi gets hurt. So we're at 37 players. We have to cut down to 26. The first thing we need to do is we need to look at pitching. Uh, and I guess, you know, the, just quickly for those of you who didn't watch the live stream, we brought in... Uh, three pitchers this offseason. Uh, we brought in Reed Detmers. We picked him up in a trade with the Angels for Josh Naylor. Yeah, we moved on from Josh Naylor this past offseason. Um, he had a pretty good 2023. His 2024 was, I mean, he was good for one and a half war. Uh, he was dead league average hitter, and he's below, very below average defensively. So we made the decision to move on from Naylor. And in return, we picked up Reed Detmers, who is a uh, going to be a so solid swing piece. I think he'll do a good job in the bullpen, uh, but he's also, with that control, uh, he could also, I think, be a pretty solid uh, starter force if we need him. We have a ton of starting pitching, so I don't know that's going. I don't know if that's going to be necessary, but um, we have him if we need him. Uh, we also signed two uh, pitchers. We signed Sir Anthony Dominguez to a, was it a three-year or four-year? Four-year contract worth $40 million. The final year is a team option. I don't know how well that contract's going to age, given that he's already 30, but he is the reigning Rolades relief pitcher of the year. Uh, he's got good stuff, good movement, above average control, two fantastic wipeout pitches. You can see last year he was two and four with a one six eight ERA. Only four home runs in 64 innings, struck out 83. We're going to play him in a stopper role. Uh, and our closer is Mr. Edwin Diaz. We signed Diaz to a four-year, $36 million option, or $36 million contract, which is really two years at 18. The final two years are team options, so we can move on from that relatively easily. Diaz will be our closer. Uh, last year with the Red Sox, 4-4, four four, 35 saves, a 1.67 ERA, 107 strikeouts in 59 innings. Elite stuff. I mean, if, <laughs> 99 fastball, 100 slider. He does give up a, a fair number of, um, I guess, no, he doesn't. I don't. I mean, he's a fly ball pitcher, so we'll see what happens. He only gave up two home runs in 59 innings a year ago, but he gave up 10 in 51 innings the year before that. So I would suspect... His numbers will be closer to this, his 2023 numbers and his 2024 numbers, but he should be fine. So those are the three additions we made to our pitching staff. Uh, we're at 20 pitchers right now, so we have to send six pitchers down. So Bobby Johnson, Lomelli, send the easy ones down first. Um... Ratings. 
All right. So now, I mean, right now it starts to get tough with, with the amount of pitchers we have. Um, see, Duplantier probably has the worst ratings of the bunch, but he's an extreme ground ball pitcher. I think... I don't know that Mercardier, Mercardier is ready, so we'll send... He's actually injured. Well, it's a day-to-day injury, but... And it's only one day. So if I try to send him down, it's going to say, no, put him on the injured list instead. Oh, I guess it didn't. Okay. So we'd send him down. Um, I I mean, I'd like to keep Duplantier up just because he's a, an extreme ground ball lefty. <clears throat> but given that I have to send four more pitchers down still, I don't know that that's going to be an option. Um... I think Hamilton can go down. I'm going to have to... Yeah, I'm going to have to... Oh, God, I really don't want to. Although, I mean, he wasn't... He hasn't been... I mean, he hasn't been that good. I mean, his 2022 was pretty good. Um, I can't imagine that he's going to get claimed. He's a 30-year-old reliever. So let's just go ahead and designate. So we got to send three more pitchers down. I want to keep Tim Hill up simply because of his ratings against lefties. If I can really limit him to a specialist, uh, he's going to be fantastic. And maybe, and we can't go with 14, <clears throat> 14 ba- uh, pitchers because we are going to need um, all of those offensive position players. Maybe we send Guest down, uh, let him work on his craft a little bit longer in AAA. He's not going to like it. Um, but, I, you know... I, I'm not crazy about that because, well, I'm just not crazy about that. I mean, as a, as a, as a, I mean, he's phenomenal. Uh, as a starter, obviously his stuff isn't quite as good, but I think we're going to leave him in AAA to start the season. If we have any injuries at all, he'll be that first call up. So we got to send two more pitchers down, huh? I can maybe Gratterall? refuses to be demoted. Does anybody want him? I mean, his ratings have really dropped over the last... Yeah, I mean, look at this. All of his ratings have dropped over the last year or so. And he's not even a ground ball pitcher anymore. When we traded for him, he was a ground ball pitcher. Is anybody interested in Bruce Dar Gratterall? <clears throat> be nice to get that 2.7 off the books if we can help it, too. Uh, let's try it like that. <clears throat> Looking for somebody in the minors or on a minor league contract. I mean, if I have to, I'll just designate him. I'm not all that fussed about it, but yeah, we're just going to designate Gratterall and it's fine. It's funny. He was our slated to be our best uh, bullpen arm last year, and this year he gets cut. So we got to send one more pitcher down. I mean, <laughs> look at the look at this look at our our, our stats in in uh, uh, in in spring training, guys. Look at look at these pitcher ratings. Look at the statistics for our our, our bullpen. And I mean, really, Logan Gilbert is the one based on statistics who had by far the worst month or the worst um, uh, the worst preseason. Who gets sent down? I mean, I guess it has to be Duplantier. I don't really want to do it. Does anybody want him? Let's him ahead a day. Send him ahead one day. That way we can make offers again. If nobody wants him, I'll just DFA him, I guess. Yeah, same. Same players. Okay. All right. Well, I guess it's going to be Duplantier. Which I'm not crazy about, but it's fine. So, these are our 13 pitchers that we're going to be carrying. Now, the question remains, what do we do with our starting pitching? Because Logan Gilbert, he had by far the worst month of any of our starters. Jackson Bennett... Um, had a really, really good spring. Um, you know what? I 
think we do this. I, I like. I'm not crazy about doing this right off the bat, but Bennett hasn't. I just noticed that he hadn't pitched higher than A ball, and in high A ball he wasn't very good. So let's let's start him in in AAA, and we. I mean, we have a ton of pitching depth that we haven't had previously, right? So we have a lot of options if somebody's bad or if somebody gets hurt. You know, we're not gonna be. We're not going to be stuck in a in a in a bad in a bad way. So we're down to thirty. So we got to send four batters down. So Riley Adams, Fletcher, Rivas. Those are the first three. And now it's going to get difficult. Now, oh, I guess it's not. Najiba is going to be that fourth. So Riley Adams. I you see. I hate to to designate Riley Adams because we don't have as much depth at catcher. We don't really have any depth at catcher, at least in the upper minor leagues. We've got Calvin Harris, who I guess could come up and, and play a backup catcher role if, if we needed him to. Um, so let's see, I guess, if anybody is interested in Riley Adams. Recording, right? Yep, I am recording. My audio is working. Yeah, nobody wants him either. I could bring Brendan Rogers back. Yeah, nobody that I'm overly interested in. All right, so I have a feeling he's going to get claimed. Just, you know, a 28 year old three star catcher who can play solid defense, hit for some power. Um, I have a feeling he gets claimed. We'll, we'll see what happens. Although he didn't hit very well. Uh, and is one full season with us. So maybe not. Maybe not. All right. So we have... We're at our 26, man. So let's go ahead and set our roster. Uh, I am... I think we're going to do this. Glasnow, Dunn, Schmidt, Leiter, and Logan Gilbert will be our five-man rotation. Hang on just a sec. Just got to get more comfortable here. Uh, our bullpen. So I mentioned Edwin Diaz is going to be our closer. Uh, Sir Anthony Dominguez, we're going to make him a stopper. Um, I would say I'm fine with Webb and Detmers as our setup men. Uh, we will make Medina and Doyle our middle relief. Hill's going to be a specialist and see if we can just leave him as a specialist. Duplantier is going to be the long relief slash emergency starter. So uh, we'll lean heavily on on Diaz and, and Dominguez as we should because they're both very, very good. I think our starting pitching is better than it ever has been, and I think the rest of our bullpen is pretty solid. It wasn't long ago that Medina was one of our best bullpen pieces. Now he's kind of that that, you know, break and clay in case of you know, break glass in case of emergency type thing. Um, it allows us to have someone like Tim Hill as a specialist because we have enough other good bullpen pieces around him. So the lineup. Lineup's going to be fun because we've got some talent out here. So let's clear this. Let's go to batting ratings. All right. So Jose Ramirez is our number three hitter. Um, Gallo is number four. And our lineup's going to look very similar, I think, to last year. So McKinstry will bat leadoff. Um, our num number two, the number two spot's going to be interesting because we no longer have... Um, um, we no longer have uh, Naylor in there. So do we want to go... I kind of like Adele in the five spot. It's just, a, you know, that that three, four, five, six of Ramirez, Gallo, Adele, and Veen. I just, I think that, you know, it's sort of a murderer's row, if you will. So, I mean, does that, I mean, does that mean that Wesniak is our number two? Who, by the way... Developed pretty nicely at first base, given that he only had the one the one spring training. He's already up to a 48 position rating. So he'll be better than what Naylor was at first. So, yeah, I mean, I think our lineup, at least initially, is going to look very, very similar to what we had last season. We just put Wesniak in there instead of Naylor. He wants to start a postal every four games. I'm okay with that. Um... 
I do want to get Hannah some some game some some playing time. Play three times, three games every ten. Play thirty percent of the games or start thirty percent of the games. That's fine. Uh, Genoa isn't gonna play much, but you can see his ratings have actually increased since we picked him up off the the rule five. So uh, he's going to be our our second baseman of the future um, once we're sort of priced out of uh, McKinstry or we choose to move on from him. Uh, so let's let's just set the DH lineup real quick because Apostle. Not that we're gonna play as a DH very with the DH very often, but. You want to make sure it's set. So let's paste the lineup here. And what do we want to do with left-handed batters? Are there any anybody in here that we want to... I think... Hmm. Oh, right. Enrique Hernandez needs to come in and start at second base. Uh, and do we want to go... How is Romo against lefties? Yeah, he's not as good. I think we go Ali Sanchez against lefties just to keep Ali happy. Or happier, I guess. And Apostle... We're going to swap Apostle every second game against lefties. Uh, that way he can get some playing time as well. Uh, all right. So let's copy this, paste this in here. Uh, we need to stick Apostle back in there as the DH. We'll move him up. All right, so now our rosters are set, our lineups are set, our pitching staff is set. Now we just have to make sure that our minor leaguers are where we want them. So we'll start down here. I think we can take this off of uh, Jackson Ferris at this point. Is there anybody that we want to call up? He hit 300. Yeah, we want to call up Hamill. We'll call him up to A ball. And then we will disable his promotion. Carter Young was in A ball. He hit pretty well, so we'll move him up here. And we will, and he's 24, so we're, we're going to have to start to test him a little bit. Anybody else? Diego Ortiz, he spent three straight years in rookie ball. He probably deserves to be called up, but I'm going to leave him where he is. His contact just isn't, I mean, I guess we can call him up. Disable, and we'll disable Wagner. He isn't developing. Um, but, I mean, his bat looks pretty solid. So um, he hit the ball well in rookie ball last year. He's 22, so let's actually move him up here to A ball. Carter Smith, um, he didn't pitch particularly well in high A last year, but he's already two and a half stars, so I think he needs to be called up. Calvin Harris can get called up. Spencer Miles, uh, he can get called up. Barco there. He has dropped to two stars. Uh, Drew Jones is going to start in double A, but he'll probably be in triple A relatively quickly. Jim Denny uh, will start in double A. He's not ready. Luke Lito really came out of nowhere uh, this past offseason. If you look at his scouting, um, his numbers, his potential have, have really gone up since we drafted him at everything. His contact potential went from a 20 up to a 40. His power has gone from a 50 to a 55. His eye has gone from a 60 up to an 85. So he has developed nicely as a bat. Uh, we'll leave him in double A for now since he's only 22. But we'll continue to play him as a two-way player. And maybe he's our first baseman of the future with that gap power and, and eye discipline. So uh, Alex Freeland, uh, he'll start in double A. He hit really well in high A. Uh, the rest of these guys can stay where they are. Here we got Mercartier, Guess, and Bennett will all start in Triple A. Uh, little Melly, we can leave him there as well. So yeah, I think we are all set. So let's uh, go ahead to opening day, and we'll look at the waiver wire and stuff. Not that I suspect we're going to be able to take anybody, but um, we're going to look anyway.
I'm excited about this year, guys. Team looked really, really good last year. 99 wins a year ago. Um, and we made some significant improvements. And the best part about it is that most of our good players are young. So unless you see some major regression, which I don't see why that would happen given how much we're putting into uh, player development, um, those young players should continue to only get better. All right, so he expects us to play 500 ball. Okay, top 100 prospects. We got Guess at 6, Drew Jones at 8, Jim Denny at 10. So again, we have three of the top 10 prospects in baseball. Um, here's John Madugno, who was the other pick that we were looking at. He's 9, so Madugno's 9, and Denny's 10, and Madugno's now 24, and he is in AAA this year. So we'll keep an eye on him. Denny still has a ways to go, uh, but once that stuff develops, I think he'll be in good shape. Uh, I assume we have the top minor league system in the game, yes. We also have Negron at 34 and Acevedo at 30. And Acevedo actually could probably end up being a trade ship. Very, very good defensively. Has the potential to be a, a solid extra base hitter, but he's never going to hit for a lot of contact, and he's already 21. Uh, so let's actually move him up to A ball and see if that changes anything. He could be part of a deadline deal, potentially. No. All right. Uh, Preseason predictions. I have to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. I will try to edit that out if I remember. If not, I apologize. Uh, so they expect us to go 98 and 64. So our owner only wants us to finish 500. Uh, OSA is expecting us to win the National League. Uh, we got Ramirez in there. We got Adele in there. Pitching-wise, we don't have anybody, but that is fine. So we're taking on the Dodgers here on opening day. Who are the Dodgers pitching in this one? Who is the Dodgers' ace? Jacob deGrom. Really? Okay. Well, his ratings have rebounded here a little bit. Um, but still not worth what we were paying him, so I'm fine with that. They, they got, look at they got they four. All five of their starters are at least three and a half stars, and of course they pick up Pablo Lopez. Of course they do. What did they give up to get him? Just out of curiosity. Christian McGowan, who's retired, and the number 114 prospect in baseball. You're telling me that we couldn't match this? I tried. You guys weren't interested. All right. Whatever. All right. So let's play this game here against uh, Los Angeles and see if we can start end our two-game losing streak here. As, uh, we've lost our first two opening days. So for them, Mookie Betts gets the start in right field batting leadoff. Xander Bogarts batting third or batting second and playing third. That lineup, man, is just crazy good. Cody Bellinger batting third, playing center field. Spencer Torkelson in the cleanup hole, playing left. Gavin Lux batting fifth, playing second. Will Smith behind the dish, batting sixth. Old friend CJ Crone batting seventh, playing first. Marcus Simeon, another old friend, playing short, batting eighth. And Jacob deGrom on the mound. The now 36-year-old Jacob deGrom for us. McKinstry batting second, playing leadoff. Sam Wesniak, the rookie. Getting his first opening day, batting second, playing first. Jose Ramirez in the three-hole, batting third, uh, playing third. Joey Gallo in the cleanup spot, as he's been now for four years. Joe Adele batting fifth, playing center. Zach Veen in left, batting sixth. At Alberto Mondesi, batting seventh, playing short. Drew Romo batting eighth behind the dish. And Tyler Glasnow, who was 17-9 and nine last season for us. 230 strikeouts in 175 innings. So let's get to some baseball. All right. So we uh, will. Why is McKinstry? Oh, because DeGrom is a righty. Right. Uh, all right. So here comes McKinstry leading this one off against Jacob DeGrom. And he takes three pitches, three strikes, and he's out. Stepping in now is Wesniak. One, two pitch to him. He bloops that one to the first baseman. Catch made there. Two up, two down. Jose Ramirez now full count pitch to him. In the dirt, ball four. 
Joey Gallo comes up with runner on second and two outs. And he hits a fly ball out to right. Catch is going to be made out there. No runs in the top of the first. So Glasnow will face Betts, Bogarts, and Bellinger. Lots of Bs. Here comes Mookie. One-two pitch, two Betts. Grounded to third. Over to first. One up, one down. Bogarts stepping in now. 3-1 pitch to the X-Man. In the dirt for a ball. Bellinger now. He's an extreme pull hitter, so hard shift right. Outfield, shift right. 0-1 pitch to Bellinger. Is hit out to a center field. That's going to get down. That's going to be extra bases. Here comes, nope, the runner rounds third. Doesn't score, though. So they have second and third now. One out, and Spencer Torkelson stepping in. Look at that power. Hit 30 home runs a year ago for Detroit. His first year with uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers. 1-0 pitch to Torkelson. Now it's hit down the left field line, and that's going to score at least one. And it's two-run single for Bellinger, and we're quickly in a 2-0 hole. Gavin Lux now. It's fly ball out to center. Back on it goes Adele, and he makes the catch on the warning track. Will Smith now. 2-2 pitch to him. Strike three. All right, so we get out of the inning, giving up two. Not a great start. Uh, but I think we can hit DeGrom. I think we can get to him. Adele bloops that one into left. It's going to be a base hit. So leadoff single for Joe Adele. That brings up Zach Veen, the reigning National League Rookie of the Year. Grounds that one to first, over to second. So fielder's choice. Mondesi stepping in now. Grounded in the hole. Six to four, another fielder's choice. And now Drew Romo. Mondesi goes down to first on the errant pickoff throw. That one is grounded back up the middle, and we can't get that run home. CJ Crone, his extreme pull. He's a righty, so hard shift right. Oh, nope, hard shift left. And the outfield needs to shift left. 3 2 pitch to Crone. That one's flied out to left, and that's going to get down for a hit. So, rough start here for um, Tyler Glasnow. Rough start, same deal. Uh, hard shift left. Outfield shift left. Another 3-2 pitch. There we go. Strike three to Simeon. DeGrom steps in. He bunt, gets the bunt down. So runner on. Runner in scoring position. Two outs for Mookie, who is an extreme pull hitter. So we will hard shift, and we will shift. Mookie hits that one through for a base hit. Here comes the throw to the plate, and he's safe. So we're now down three to one. Uh, three to nothing, rather. Mookie steals second. Oh, he's caught stealing second, so that's nice. All right, so we're, we need three now. We need three, as DeGrom has uh, set us down quietly through the first two. The fly ball out to center. Catch is going to be made, and we go back up to the top of the order. Zach McKinstry, 0-2 pitch to him, strike three. Sam Wesniak draws a two-out walk. That'll bring up Jose Ramirez. We need a big hit here, Jose. Come on. And there's a big hit into the right center field gap. It's going to get all the way to the wall. Is that going to score the run? Wesniak is home, and we cut the lead to two on an RBI double by Jose Ramirez. So now we need a big hit from Joey Gallo. Grounded. Oh, nice play at first by Crone. So we get a run back. We're down 3-1. It would be nice to get through an inning without giving up a run here. That's that's for sure. So let's uh, shift the infield left. 1-2 pitch to Bogarts. Strike three. I don't know if you remember last year's opening game, but uh, that was also pitched by uh, Glasnow, and he struck out like 13 in six innings or something. Cody Bellinger. Hard shift right, outfield shift right, 1-0 pitch to him. It's a base hit up the middle. 
Torkelson now, 0-1 pitch to him. That one's hit out to center field. Catch is going to be made by Adele. Two down, and Gavin Lux now. Blooped out to left. Another base hit. That's six hits for the Dodgers in two and two-thirds innings. Will Smith stepping in now. 3-0 count to him. Ball four. Loads the bases for Crone. This is... Uh, has not been a great start here. So let's uh, go and get Tommy Doyle up in the pen. Here comes the pitch. Ah, come on. Wild pitch. It's four to one. And that's going to get down two more runs are going to score. God. Yeah. Okay, so apparently I'm never destined to win a game because I have lost now three in a row and I am on pace to um, on pace to lose my fourth in a row since taking over this series as we are going to bring Tommy Doyle in here. Not that I expect it to make any difference at all, but Tommy Doyle comes in now. Face Marcus Simeon. They've gotten every big hit. Every time they've had a runner in scoring position, they've gotten a hit. Every single time. Strike three. So we are down by five going into the fourth. DeGrom to Adele. Grounded up the middle. It's going to be a 4-3 put out. Zach Veen. Looped to the third baseman. Catch is made there. And and Mondesi strikes out swinging. Fantastic. All right, so here comes Doyle against DeGrom. In that inning, we had two outs and nobody on, and they still scored three runs. Mookie's an extreme pull hitter. 2-2 two -two pitch to Betts. An extreme pull hitter hits the ball to right field. Bogarts, I guess with nobody on, we'll just stay in the normal. All right, so Doyle goes an inning and a third scoreless. Get Medina ready. Uh, let's get back into this one. Come on, Drew. That's a line out to the first baseman. On a 3-1 pitch, down by five. Jamison Hanna will come in and pinch hit. First pitch swinging, ground to the third baseman, and McKinstry. He's going to strike out for a third time. Oh, grounds out to first. Okay, so the offense isn't getting it done, and the starting pitching didn't get it, get it done. That is not a good combination. Uh, hard shift left and shift left with Medina. Oh, no, that's the wrong way. Hard shift right. <laughs> of course, that, I, that that would have been bad. Here comes the first pitch to Bellinger. And that is caught out there. Gallo. Okay, good. He's all right. Uh, Spencer Torkelson. He had the big hit in that three-run third. And he hits a home run. So now we are down by six. Gavin Lux. Called strike three. And Will Smith. Called strike three. All right, so we've got two run, two hits and one run through five. Our bullpen, our pitching has been bad. This doesn't look to be our game, but we'll keep plugging away here. As Wesniak draws a walk, that brings up Ramirez. He gets him called out on strike three. Gallo, strike three. Nope, Gallo grounds it. Six to th or three to six. Fielder's choice, Joe Adele. Is that a two run homer for Adele? I believe it is. Joe Adele goes yard, gets us within four at seven to three. Zach Veen. He hits one out to left field. Did we go back to back? We do. We go back to back. Adele and Veen. Get us within three. It's now seven to four. Adalberto Mondesi stepping in now. 
And he hits that one out to left center field. That's going to be a double. So back-to-back home runs with two outs followed by a double. And we're going to have to get somebody else in the pen if uh, Romo is... um, Romo is uh, Romo gets on base here. Uh, we'll go Dominguez. Come on, Drew. Come on, Drew. Bat, a wild pitch. Mondesi to third. Let's go, Drew. Come on. Get him in. Ah, he strikes out swinging. All right, so they go 7-8-9. We got back into this one a little bit, guys. I still don't anticipate that we are going to... Uh, to make it happen, but who knows? Who knows? So shift left. 1-1 one, one pitch to Crone. Grounded to third. Over to first for the out. Extreme pull for Simeon. Uh, hard shift left. Outfield shift left. That one's popped out into left. Catch is going to be made there. Two up, two down. And now they go Hunter Fiducia. 0-2 pitch to him. Grounded to third. Scooped up. Over to first for the out. So 1-2-3 inning there. Uh, I got to get... I think I have to sit Dominguez down. Get Detmers up. And who do they have pitching? Lucas Sims a righty? Okay. So, I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll get Apostle up and see if he can get on base with a with a walk or see if he can launch one. 2-2 two, two pitch to him. Strikes out swinging. It's back to the top of the order and McKinstry. 1-2 pitch to Zach. He strikes out again. Is that the golden sombrero for McKinstry in this one? No, he's 0-4 with three strikeouts. Wesniak now, 1-1 one, one pitch to him. And that's going to do it for the seventh. We go to the stretch down by three. We're going to bring in Reed Detmers here to face the top of the order. Mookie's extreme pull, so we will uh, hard shift left. And the outfield will shift left. We need to keep them down here. We only need three runs, so we can get back into this. Fly ball out to center. Catch is going to be made out there by Adele. One up, one down. Bogarts now. Full count pitch to him. Strike three. And Cody Bellinger. Hard shift right. And the outfield will shift right. Can we get a one, two, three inning out of Detmers? Now line drive. It's going to get down for a base hit. And now Spencer Torkelson. 2-2 pitch to Torque. Strike three. So good inning from Detmers. So we go Ramirez, Gallo, and Adele here against Lucas Sims. 1-0 pitch to Ramirez. That one's hit high in the air out to center field. Is it going to have enough? Nope. Catch can be made in front of the warning track. Gallo now against the lefty. 2-2 pitch. He's going to strike out swinging or looking. No, he's going to hit that one. Is that gone? Another home run. So three home runs. Joey Gallo muscles that one up over the center field wall. And we are within two runs. Oops, I didn't want to go, I wanted to, go to Colorado. I am at Colorado. Okay, so we now will get up Dominguez. Joe Adele hit a two-run homer his last time up. Hits another home run right here. And we are within a run. So four home runs in this one. We go back-to-back for a second time in the game, and we are within one run. Zach Veen stepping in now. Veen hits that one out to right field. Is that got enough? No, a catch is going to be made. Oh, ho, 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 ho. all right. Adalberto Mondesi stepping in now. Two outs, nobody on. We are only down by a run. And he hits that one out center. Catch is going to be made out there by Met by Betts. So we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. And we trail now only 7-6. to six. Sir Anthony Dominguez is going to come in against Gavin Lux. First pitch from Dominguez to Lux. First pitch he throws as a, as a Rocky is hit for a home run. So it's now a two-run game. Strike three to Kirilov. Uh, CJ Crone now. That that run hurt. That run hurt there. 
It's all right. We still got one inning to go. Comes the 1-0 pitch to Crone. Grounded to third. Up with it. Over to first for the out. And Marcus Simeon. Hard shift left. And outfield shift left. 2-2 pitch to Marcus. Strike three. All right. So they get a run. So we are down by two. And they're going with Brandon Hudson. He's got great stuff. Okay movement. Okay control. Can we get two? Full count pitch to Drew Romo leading off the inning. Strike three. All right, so we got to get another pitcher up. Edwin Diaz up, just in case we're able to tie it, along with Logan Webb. And Kike will get the at-bat here. 0-2 pitch to Hernandez. Strike three. So we're down to our last batter, Zach McKinstry. Looking to avoid striking out for the fourth time, but he grounds out to second. So we drop our first game of the year by the final score of 8-6. to six. Zach McKinstry 0-5, for 5, three strikeouts. Wesniak uh, 0 for 2 with a run scored in two walks in his first opening day. Jose Ramirez 1-3 for 3 with an RBI double. Joey Gallo homered and scored twice. Joe Adele, the big bopper for us, 3 for 4, three RBIs, two home runs. In this one, Zach Veen went back-to-back -back with him. Mondesi had a double. Romo went 0-4 for 4 with two strikeouts. Glasnow 0-1. for 1. Hannah, Apostle, and Hernandez all offers uh, at the dish. For the Dodgers, Mookie 1-4 for 4 with an RBI. Bogarts 0-3 for 3 with a run scored. Bellinger 3-4, for 4, two runs scored. Torkelson in his first game for the Dodgers, 2-3. for 3. three runs knocked in, including a home run. Gavin Lux homered. Uh, two for four with two RBIs for CJ Crone. Marcus Simeon 0 for four. Pitching, it was not a good game for Tyler Glasnow. Two and two thirds innings, seven hits, six runs, two walks, three strikeouts. Tommy Doyle pitched a perfect inning and a third. Uh, Medina came in, uh, gave up a run in two. Detmers came in, pitched an inning, uh, struck out two. Dominguez gave up a home run. He struck out two. Jacob DeGrom. Picks up the win for the Dodgers. Four runs in five and two-thirds innings. Lucas Sims was really good in relief. Three strikeouts in an inning and two-thirds. We got a couple of runs off of Will Smith. And then Hudson picks up the save. So we lose on opening day. Um, yeah, so not great. But, you know, it's one game. So we will keep going. All right, let's see what happens in game two. I'd really like to not start this season out 0-3. Especially with a 99-win season behind us. We lose 4-3. to Again, we got down early. Got down 4 nothing. scored 3 in the 7th. Couldn't complete the comeback. Dunn picks up the loss. Bullpen pitched well. So let's avoid the sweep here, guys. I really don't want to get swept in the first uh, series of the year. Pick up one. There we go. A 5-1 win in Los Angeles. Wesniak goes two for four with his first major league home run. McKinstry has three hits. Looks like Gallo hit another home run. Veen hit another home run. And Clark Schmidt picks up the win. Going six strong. Medina and Detmers pitched three solid innings. So we go to one and two. Um, our opening, uh, opening weekend series at Los Angeles. Michael Chavis hit four home runs for the Red Sox. Is he still just an average? Yeah, he's still just an average bat. That's crazy. Juan Soto hits three home runs against the Red Sox. All right, so we are going to continue on. Take on the Arizona Diamondbacks, our first three games at home. And these are the games we had a lot of success in last year. We're against these teams that were below us in the rankings, so San Francisco and Arizona. Uh, hopefully we can have that same type of success this season. It would be nice to get back to 500 early in the year. You don't want to dig too big of a hole, so we win 10 to 9 in 11. They're not great pitching. As you can see, five runs. Presumably five runs given up by the starting pitcher, three by the bullpen, but we battled back. So, Pavin Smith, five hits for Arizona. For us, Four, uh, four runs scored and four walks for Zach Veen. Joe Adele, three hits, four RBIs. Uh, 
Uh, Jack Leiter didn't have a good game. Dominguez got lit up again. But other than that, Duplantier, Hill, Detmers, Webb, and Doyle all pitched relatively. Well, Diaz gave up a run. So our two big bullpen pieces, Dominguez and Diaz, early on, their numbers don't look great. So game five of the season, we're 2-2. Two and two. It's got to keep loading schedules. Another win, this time 14-8. to eight. Again, not good starting pitching. Uh, Gilbert gave up five and four. Medina gave up three. Uh, but those other pitchers in the bullpen, look at that, Duplantier, Doyle, Webb, and Hill all still have ERAs of zero. Wesniak homers for the second straight day. Romo hits his first. Adele hits his fourth already. And Veen his third already. So Ramirez slow out of the gate. McKinstry doing it out of the leadoff spot, 389. So we are 3-2 and two here early on. Can we get the sweep of Arizona? We do, and we win easily, 12-2. to two. So these guys, Gratterall refuses to be demoted. Um, we'll try moving him one more time, and if not, we will just uh, cut him, and we'll eat the eat the cost there. And again, looking for somebody who is making the minimum. No, there's nobody there. So, all right, well, Gratterall is going to get released. And it's like a 2.7. Yeah, 2.6. All right, so 12 2 in this one. Mondesi, four for five, three runs scored. Ramirez with two hits, two RBIs. Joe Adele continues to mash 11 RBIs in six games already. Romo picks a couple up a couple of hits. Glasnow got the start. He only went four and two thirds. Oh, it's because he threw 106 pitches in four and two thirds. He struck out ten. Much better second start. Didn't go very long into the game, but you know that happens. Bullpen uh, did well. Dominguez with his best outing for us, but uh, Detmers so far has pitched three innings, struck out seven, hasn't given up a run. Duplantier so far has pitched three perfect innings. So, bullpen looking sharp. We are 4-2. and two. And we travel to Cincinnati to take on the Reds. Winners, and we've won four in a row. Let's see what happens here. And we'll pause probably here after the Atlanta series and see how things are going, see if there are any changes that need to happen early on. 7-2 seven, seven loss, and we lose Zach McKinstry for six weeks. That's no good. Who do we call up? I think we call up Ottoman just because of the positional flexibility. I don't want to call up Simmons because if we call up Simmons, we won't be able to send him down. That's kind of the issue. All right, so Enrique Hernandez, I guess, becomes our starting second baseman across the board until we get... Um, until we get uh, uh, McKinstry back. So game two against Cincinnati. Another loss. So we drop back down to 500. We are four and four. Can we avoid the sweep? No. So we lose three in a row. Then we win four in a row. Then we lose three in a row. And we are four and five, guys. We're four and five and already three games out of first place. Only nine games into the season. So we now have three games here against Atlanta. Another loss. Finally, a 14-8 to win to snap our losing streak. It has not been a good start to the season. I'm guessing it's pitching. We'll pause here in a minute. But Drew Romo's lighting it up as a batter, which is nice to see. Joe Adele has six home runs already. Glasnow with his best start of the year. Five innings, two runs. Duplantier gets smoked. All right. Okay. Can we win this game and move back to 500? Six and six looks so much better. Nope. We're five and seven. Five and seven here early on. And it's our starters. Bullpen's been quite good. Our batting, our, our offense has been exactly what you would expect. It's our starters. And none of our starters are performing. Not a single one of them. So I don't know that there's anything I can do here other than let my starters try to work through it. I mean, offensively, we are just fine. 
Um, obviously, losing McKinstry hurts. Uh, Enrique Kike is not the same hitter by any stretch of the imagination. Um, Wesniak's doing okay in in his uh, in his. Uh, I was gonna say his ratings just exploded. Uh, he's he's doing pretty well in his in in his first season early. Uh, Ramirez not hitting for power. Adele and Veen are doing quite well. Romo's doing quite well. Our bullpen's been okay. It looks like Dominguez has settled down. He struck out 14 in seven innings. So after that rough uh, rough start, uh, he's been fine. Yeah, had this the difficult game here, but he's been okay. His last four outings, he's been fine, giving up one run. I think all we can do is just hope that the the pitching staff, the starters, kind of sort it out here a little bit. I mean, none of these guys are going to get pulled out of the rotation just yet. Um, I mean, I say just yet. I should say at all. I mean, Glasnow, Dunn, um, Leiter, Schmidt are not going to get pulled out at all. Gilbert might. You know, if Guest gets off to a decent start. But for now, we're just going to stick with what we have. So let's keep moving. Actually, guys, hang on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so we're on the road here against the Cubs, uh, hoping our pitching staff bounces back here a little bit. 6-5, win in 10, and I'll take it. I mean, it's probably still, it doesn't look like we got great starting pitching again. Well, Schmidt was okay in this one. Uh, Dominguez had a rough go of it. Um, three runs in five. Considering what we've been getting, I will take it. Um, but we pick up the win and we move to six and seven. Can we get back to 500? We win 11 to three. So that looks like a bit more of a complete win. So we get lighter goes five, gives up three runs. Again, I'm not sure why they're only going. F I mean, his pitching isn't, he's not set with a, yeah, he doesn't have a, a pitch count. So I don't know why he only went five innings, but nonetheless, that's, Still his best outing of the year. Medina and Duplantier pitch well. Mondesi homers. Enrique Hernandez homers. A uh, bit of a complete game there. That's what you like to see. So we've won two in a row. Back up to 500, looking for the sweep of the Cubs. We don't get it. We drop back under 500 at 7 and 8. Now we take on the Pirates at home. Okay. So Enrique Hernandez is out for basically the season. So at this point, we may as well call up Simmons because we're going to have to play a rookie at second base. Angel Haneo, who we weren't anticipating playing much this season, is going to be playing second base for the next few weeks. Uh, he was in rookie ball a year ago. Um, I want to try something funky here. We're going to bat Drew Romo leadoff with his 367 on base percentage. Oh God, I don't want Ottoman playing every second game. I mean, we may as well just throw the kid in and see how he does. Um, another poor pitching performance. We get down six, nothing. Glasnow again, six runs in an inning and two thirds. All right, so what's going on here? What is going on here? Let's first, let's look here. We're at 500, we're 8-8, eight and eight, but I fully anticipated us to be better than this. Chris Booker. Got good relationships. He works well with power pitchers. Is there another option that would be better? Pitchers. He's got a good relationship, an average. Geraldo. Neutral. He's legendary at teaching pitching. Oh, I gotta. Right. I never took us out of commissioner mode during the live stream. Uh, Nelson Geraldo. I think we make the move and try to bring in a new pitching coach that potentially changes things up a little bit. 
because a 7.75 starters ERA is simply not acceptable. What do we get out of Dunn today? Can we win? Go over 500? Nope. We can't get over 500. We've, I think we were there once, right? We were, what, 3-2? and two? We lose to Pittsburgh here. I mean, Dunn didn't pitch terribly. Only two runs in five, but he's dropped now to 0-4. So can we get back to 500? Nine and nine with an 11-4 victory. Apostle, let's get a pinch hit, three-run home run. Veen, four for five. Uh, Wesniak hits his fifth. Schmidt goes seven. So that's kind of more. I don't mind giving up the four runs. You do it in seven innings. That's that's much better. All right, so we are nine and nine. Okay, now we go on to San Diego. We need a, some some big pitching here. Uh, we lose one to nothing. Jack Leiter goes five, gives up one run. Machado homers, and we can't get over that hump. Nine and ten. Nine and eleven. Nine and twelve. Starting to get angry. Or frustrated, I guess. Not angry. It's a video game. I'm not angry. I'm frustrated. Now we're going to take on Carson Montgomery, who's the best pitcher in the damn world. And we're about to drop to four games under 500 here. Yeah, it's no surprise. Four straight losses, five out of six. And we finally win one to bring us to 10 and 13. Ramirez is only hitting 250. Gallo's hitting 175. Genoa's not hitting. Schmidt pitched Schmidt pitched really well. Three and one. No runs in seven innings. He struck out eleven. So if we can we still have the best offense in the National League. And our pitching our bullpen has been as advertised. Our bullpen has been very, very good. Um but our starting pitching has not allowed us to stay in games. I mean, look at that. Glasnow and Dunn, 0-7 between the two of them. But if we can win our last three games of the month, we can end up at 500. So let's see what happens here against Miami. Can we take two out of three against the Marlins? All right, so we win 5-4. to four. Yeah, and this is the frustrating part, man. Like, he was shut out for five innings, and then... Gives up four runs in the fifth to just completely ruin the start that he had had. I mean, I'm, gl I'm glad that we won, but that's just annoying. It's just annoying. Lighter's day-to-day -day for a week with a finger blister. All right. So we're 11-13. and 13. If we can win these two games against Oklahoma City, we can at least finish the month at 500, which is not what I anticipated, but it would be better than where we were. So let's see. We went eight to four. Yeah, they're three and twenty-two. If if I can't, yeah, and see, even here they they scored four runs in the first three innings against Gilbert, who battled through seven. Um, but a, a certain apostle had three home runs in this one, drove in five. Veen's hitting, Adele's hitting. I mean, so we have some players that are again. Our offense isn't the problem. Our offense isn't the problem. It's it's the pitching staff. So can we close off April with a victory and finish 13 and 13? Let's see. We went 8 to 4. Okay. So we finished the month 13 and 13. It's not what I wanted. Uh, it's not what I anticipated based on all the money we spent and everything else. But... Uh, Glasnow is still just not getting it done. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know what the deal... I mean, his BABIP is just stupid high. Um, but he hasn't pitched more than five and two-thirds, hasn't given up less than two runs in a game. I mean, we got to keep going with him, I, I assume. Um, but Veen homers, Wesniak homers twice, he's been terrific. 
He has been absolutely terrific. Nine home runs, 18 RBIs, but a 1.1 war, an OPS of over 1,100. So we made the right decision, I think, moving on from Naylor, uh, especially when you consider that we picked up, uh, really, he's been our best pitcher here in the first month, Reed Detmers. He's pitched 15 and a third innings, hasn't given up a single run. Look at, up th- look at these numbers. 15 and a third innings, three hits, 29 strikeouts in 14 games. So... I would say that trade worked out well for us. All right, so we are, let's look at player development, kind of see where we stand. Linares was, I think he was an international guy. Um, Hanoa, his contact got better, everything else got worse. Glasnow got worse, Webb got a little worse, but that's it. All right, so AL Batter of the Month, Juan Soto of the Houston Astros. NL Batter of the Month, Zach Veen. Hits 330 with eight home runs and 19 runs knocked in following up a very successful rookie campaign with a very good sophomore campaign. Campaign. Mitch Keller of Toronto, He um, is he still on the trade block? I mean, if he's still on the trade block, we may have to just throw everything we have at him. He's not currently. Hasn't been re-signed yet. Max Freed, NL. Pitcher of the Month, Rookie of the Month goes to Osiel Rodriguez of the Yankees. And in the National League, Sam Wesniak, no surprise there, 307, nine home runs, 18 runs knocked in. All right. So we're 13 and 13. We are four games out of first place. We are in fourth place. Um, Best offense in the National League. Best did everything. First in runs, first in batting average, first in on base, OPS, war, WOBA, home runs. Um... Our bullpen has been fantastic. We have the third best bullpen in the National League. Our starters are up to 14th, which means they've gotten better. And it also means there are two teams that have worse than a 6.25 ERA so far. We've only made 11 errors. Our zone rating and our defensive efficiency aren't great, but we've only made 11 errors. We are dealing with some injuries. Both of our second basemen are out, so we're leaning on uh, a rookie who we weren't anticipating. Uh, to play, who is now playing a lot. So let's start. Let's start with the lineups. So from a WAR perspective, Wesniak uh, been fantastic, putting up almost a 400 on base percentage. Zach Veen, we talked about. Drew Romo having a really nice second season. We moved him into the leadoff spot uh, until we can get our second baseman back. 342 on base percentage. Jose Ramirez gotten off to a bit of a slow start, but I mean, that's a slow start for him. I think he'll be just fine. Joe Adele was red hot at the beginning of the season. It slowed off a bit here um, over the last couple of weeks, but still on pace for 37 and 100. Uh, Ali Sanchez doing a nice job. They're doing a really nice job. I think 380. Shirt and Apostle continues to just mash in a, a pinch hitter slash backup role. Mondesi, um, He's actually having a good year, another good year for us. So no complaints. Uh, Fielding-wise, he is slightly below average, but that's fine. Adamon has played a bit. He's hitting okay. And Ao um, playing more than I would like. Um, and Gallo has been our worst offensive performer at 183. Uh, but that being said, still playing a pretty good right field. So, you know. We'll survive, I think. Uh, defensively, defensively, still early, but yeah, I mean, Adele hasn't been great, Veen hasn't been great in left and center, but our infield defense has been good. Ramirez has been good. Wesniak's been okay. Um, still not great, but better. And then this just has to get better. It just has to. Um, Oops, I'm going to go to pitching stats. So we talked about Detmers. He's been probably the best pitcher in baseball through the first month. Clark Schmidt uh, has been really solid for us, uh, or at least was the second half. Uh, Glasnow, you know, part of me thinks he's unlucky. Opponents are hitting under 300 against him. Uh, His home runs are basically right in line with what they've always been. He's walking too many. Um, but his FIP is nearly four runs lower than what he is showing. So I'm hopeful that this comes back down to earth a bit. Tommy Doyle's been really good. Sir Anthony Dominguez, 
Yeah, I think we move him into a setup role. I think he might be pitching a little too much. Um, so I think that's what we're going to do there. Duplantier has been really good. I'm glad we kept him around. Jack Leiter has been up and down, but again, not terrible. Only 270 opponent batting average. Home runs are a bit high, but it's only 5 and 26 innings. He's not walking many batters, so I'm hopeful that he uh, kind of figures it out. Tim Hill, you know, he's doing what we need him to do. Justin Dunn's been just bad. Uh, his FIP is pretty much right in line with his ERA. Uh, giving up too many home runs, walking too many batters, uh, way down from his numbers a year ago. That's not great. Uh, Diaz has been fine. Gilbert has not been fine. He's been really bad, too. Webb has been bad. And Medina, surprisingly, even though he's looks okay. Opponents are only hitting 247 against him. Yeah, it, it, it just it hasn't been a good start for the... Um, Rotation, And because of that, our revenue is down because people aren't coming. So we're going to have to start winning some games here to bring some people back out for sure. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know that there's anything that I can really do um, short of... I, I can't send them down, so what do I do? Do I send him if I, I put him in the bullpen? And if I put him in the bullpen, who gets sent down? None of my bullpen pitchers have been really bad enough to justify it. So I think we ride it out with these guys. And, you know, if another month or so passes and, and things haven't gotten better, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, do we move Glasnow? Do we look to move Gilbert and bring him? Because, I mean, Guess is already as good. 58, 47, 62. Yeah, I mean, he's already better than Gilbert. So maybe we look to move on from Logan Gilbert next episode, uh, which will actually be a live stream. That'll be Sunday. It is May 1st, so that live stream will, will probably take us at least up through the trade deadline, I would assume. Um, we'll just sim and see what happens. But, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's been an uneven start. You know, thankfully, we're only four games out of first place. Padres and the Dodgers are both 17-9, and nine, but... Um, you know, it's still early on. You know, we're only four games out. We've won four in a row. We have one more against Oklahoma City uh, before we take on who? San Francisco, Washington, Milwaukee. San Francisco, Washington, Milwaukee. So San Francisco is right ahead of us. So we could, you know, if we, we win this last game against Oklahoma City, we got an opportunity to, 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 to move back in front of San Francisco and be in third. Then we have Milwaukee, who's 9-17, and 17, to another potential winning series there, followed by the Nationals, who are pretty good. That ALE, look at the NL East, guys. That's really, really good. So we have one and three in OPS in the National League, uh, and that's it. Nobody else showing up on there anywhere. Um, so, yeah, so we got to hope that, that May is a better month for our pitching staff, for our starters. Uh, usually it's our bullpen, but our bullpen has been really, really, really good so far. Um yeah, so I think that's going to do it. How long have I been going for? Let's take a look here. Maybe I'll keep going. I've been going for, what, about an hour and 10 minutes? Yeah, I'll keep going. I will keep going, but uh, it's going to be on the other side of this break, so I'll be right back. Actually, guys, I think I'm going to end it here. I want to make sure I get this over to the fine people at GM Games so that they can get this loaded up today so that I can stick to the schedule that uh, that I have for myself. So, yeah, we will be back Sunday night at uh, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Twitch on the GM Games channel, and we will run through May, June, and, and probably July, and we'll, we'll, we'll get, us our, get ourselves up to the t trade deadline in the next episode. So guys, if you have any thoughts about what I can do here, let me know. You know, we've got three or four days before the live stream. So let's take a look at that. Let me know your thoughts and I'll talk to everybody soon. See everybody Sunday. Bye-bye.